Assalamu alaikum. Today we'll talk about Pakistan and its relations with the world powers. And um, you know that uh, countries who can influence the decisions of the world almost are called because of their global uh, superiority, they are called as world powers. And at this point of time, when we are talking about Pakistan's relations with world powers, we are thinking about its relations with United States, China, USSR, and also with Britain. Um, since the tensions of Cold War between your USA and USSR from 1946 to 1949, there was, um, there was an ideological war between the country is led by the United States. They stood for democracy and market economy, while the Soviet Socialist Republic which subscribed to dictatorship and proletariat. It was like a bipolar age, and it is called a bipolar age. So from the beginning of the Cold War, which encompassed the Korean and the Vietnam War, relations between United States and People's Republic of China they were not good, they were sour, rather hostile, until 1970, when ideological differences were sub served in a strategic constitution on both confronted the USSR. The Cold War lasted as long as USSR remained a communist power and held sway over the Central Asian states. Since 1991, the USSR as such has ceased exist and no longer remain an ideological adversary for the United States. So, uh, they do have a huge nuclear arsenal, but still, Russia may not have lost its importance, but since it is no longer opposed to the United States, what has emerged is known as a unipolar world where only United States is considered a world power. Britain too had seen its status reduced but had anticipated this reduction and planned accordingly. It has retained insufficient heirlooms of the empire and from time to time partition of India in 1947 to at least the 1956 war when its invasion of uh, Egypt was disliked by both US and the USSR. So it remained for practical purpose of world power, but just up for the practical purpose of world power, not enjoying the same strong position as USSR and USA. How have been the relations of Pakistan with United States of America? So since its inception, Pakistan has shown a lean, leaning over United States of America. And in 2003, we can consider it as a good point to view the nature of U.S.-Pakistan relations. Uh, in, on 15th March 2003, United States waived democracy-related sanctions against Pakistan. And on 24th March, the U.S. imposed sanctions on the KRL nuclear facility of Pakistan. So, all these... Um, a curtailments on nuclear and being a nuclear power that Pakistan was and uh, then came the Abdul Qadir Khan's nuclear proliferation scandal and these developments show that there are no other two countries in the world whose relationships are like a seesaw or checkered like Pakistan and USA. When the U.S. and Pakistan established relationship, as I mentioned earlier in 1947, they had different reasons for doing so. Pakistan needed help against India, which had withheld its military assets while the war had broken out in Kashmir, and the U.S. wanted Pakistan's assistance in encircling the communist states of the USSR. And you know that it's... Uh, the uh, Russia-Afghan war, when Pakistan sided with America, was almost realizing that uh, uh, that thought. Uh, 
even when in 1959, if we go back, there was this China-India tension. President Ayub left his country aghast when he proposed joint Indo-Pakistan defense pact. Luckily for Pakistan, the Indian Prime Minister turned this offer down. So, till 1970, the relations between US and Pakistan uh, went into a change when the US revised its China policy and sought Pakistan's help in establishing contact with it. It was uh, the President Zeto Bhutto who publicly acknowledged that President Nixon had saved West Pakistan and Azad Kashmir and he was the one instrumental to send Kissinger to Beijing. Pakistan became a frontline state when Jimmy Carter was the president and Ronald Reagan received massive military and financial aid. The Pakistani government under Ziaul Haq took complete advantage of the lifting of American pressure and went ahead with the nuclearization program. Once Pakistan lost its frontline status, events moved at a fast pace. Within two years, the USSR was fragmented and with the end of the Cold War, the United States resumed its nuclear non-proliferation pressure on Pakistan with a spate of legislation. The amendments were first invoked by President Jimmy Carter on April 6, 1979, two days after Zede Bhutto was executed, but soon had to be suspended in view of the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. It, um, we must note it that this situation was more critical for Pakistan than for the US, since Pakistan could hardly have been able to survive when Russian troops advanced into Pakistan. But the restoration of democracy, it was a big event, brought about a thaw in mutual relations. President Bill Clinton said on the occasion of Benazir Bhutto's official visit that it was wrong on the part of the US to retain both the F-16 aircrafts and the money paid for it. So, when Pakistan once again came under the military rule in 1999, General Musharraf, President Clinton showed his displeasure by condescending to spend only a few hours in Pakistan on 26 March 2000, when he delivered a homily on a television. The succeeding George Bush administration indicated that it would objectively review bilateral relations. And by an ironic twist, Pakistan was being held responsible for the puritanical deed of the Taliban regime in Pakistan. Uh, the 11th September 2001, 9-11 as it is known, terrorist attacks gave Pakistan an opportunity to cut its Taliban connection. The US ultimatum and Pakistan's opportunity to withdraw from a most unpopular alliance were the flip sides of a coin. Pakistan again became a frontline state and an ally in the war against terror. President Parvez Musharraf was received warmly in the US on 12 February 2002 and a number of times thereafter. The outstanding issues between US and Pakistan and which are very central for the Pakistan studies students to understand Number one is the cross-border terrorism. Number two was the case of uh, democracy. Number three was the nuclear proliferation. And fourth was the China factor, because Pakistan's friendship with China became the first cause of friction between US and Pakistan. How Pakistani government and people perceived it. We need to clear up the American perception about Pakistan. It is equally imperative to clear the Pakistani perception of the U.S. Generally, we think that U.S. is only a fair weather friend 
and we would have fared better by being neutral or with an alliance with Russia. Well, it is easy then said, because as for the 1971 war, we have already seen the Russians and stationed two nuclear submarines of the U.S. coast in 1971. Finally, we must note that no matter how low our relations have plunged, there have been strong votaries of Pakistan in the United States. Senator Dan Burton, Tom Harkin, John Warner, we have to remember these names. And especially Congress Mandana uh, Aroha Brasher criticized his government for inaction on Kashmir and savaged the Indian representative and called for a plebiscite. In no other country do we have such eloquent spokesmen. Then when we talk about USSR and Pakistan, it is again a very uh, complex situation, but uh, in May 2002, you, uh, Russia invited the leaders of India and Pakistan to attend a peace conference. Uh, Pakistan agreed, India refused, as, as we should uh, expect. And when the Indian Prime Minister, back uh, in 1949, he was uh, invited, Joseph Stalin invited Liaquat Ali Khan to the USSR and on 7 June Liaquat Ali Khan announced acceptance and proposed August 20th to go but it could not materialize. It is during the phase in 1960, May 1960, that a U-2 American spy plane that had taken off from Bada Bear near Peshawar, it was uh, General Ayub Khan's time, was shot down over USSR territory. So the, um, I, this was a little um, rift and a ripple to the bad waves. When we came to the um, a tragic moment of uh, East Pakistan secession in 1971, um, Zed Bhutto was not uh, very clear on that position or uh, he didn't come out very uh, strongly over that. So it, it meant that um, all these ups and downs created a ripple in the uneventful relations between Russia and Pakistan when Prime Minister Michael Fredkov arrived in 2007 in, at Islamabad and at the head of a large delegation. Apart from delivering a formal message from President uh, Valdemir Putin to President Musharraf, he held a joint press conference with Prime Minister Shokat Aziz on April 12th, advocating economic diplomacy and expanded cooperation in the war against extremism and terrorism. I think this, this, this was the historically the best help that Pakistan could get from USSR. Uh, Shokat Aziz said that both sides had agreed to promote trade ties using Iran as a corridor for this purpose. And delegation members accompanying the Russian Premier offered Pakistan high-speed locomotives and train coaches. I will stop here for the part one of this lecture and will continue in the part two.